Okay, this is going to be a demo of a little algorithm that I wrote to solve a, a combinatorial puzzle from an app on the iOS store. It's called Colors United uh, for free. It's pretty cute. Uh, so yeah, so I'll show you guys the mechanics of the gameplay so you have an idea of what it's like. So here's a typical game board um, composed of square tiles. You start at this oscillating tile and then your moves are equivalent to choosing colors in this bottom row. And when you choose a color, your active region, or how I like to call it, uh, which is initially just this oscillating tile, takes on the color of your choice and then absorbs all of the adjacent tiles of like color. So for example, if I went uh, blue right now, I then become blue and I absorb all of the blue tiles that are adjacent to my active region. And then that becomes my new active region. So I, now I have uh, both of these tiles will now change color in subsequent moves. So if I then went uh, yellow, I'm going to yellow, orange, yellow, green. And then you just traverse the level like that, and the objective is to paint the entire board the same color in as few moves as possible. And they cap you at um, some number of moves for this level. It, it happens to be 13. So I finish it on uh, seven moves and I get three stars, woohoo. Uh, so yeah, so um, I will show you guys uh, for level eight. So this is not squares, obviously this is a circle board. And the, um, the semantics of adjacency for circle tiled boards is a bit different. Um, so for example, this orange tile, this guy is adjacent to the eight surrounding circles. So for example, I've been starting at this oscillating tile. If I then went green, I would expand down all the way into here. And then if I then chose purple as my second move, I would reach all the way down here. But, um, but this is actually a good one to show you guys the algorithm. Take a screenshot and send it over to myself. <laughs> So yeah. So I actually have it set up. Um, actually, I make this clean. I have it set up. It uses OpenCV, uh, the library open source computer vision, to just take the screenshot. Actually, in my downloads, and it is seven thirty six. So it takes just a screenshot and it's sort of raw image data and then the max number of moves that is allowed, so 15. And it cannot deduce that right now just from the image alone, which would be cool though. And you run that and ignore the expected runtime right now. The expected runtime is not accurate. Uh, that's based on different levels and uh, previous trials and different algorithm. But so, uh, so the results are as follows. Apparently the, uh, the Optimal sequence of moves that leads you to a solution state in as few moves as possible uh, requires 11 moves and this is the sequence. So each letter represents um, a color. So G is green, O is orange, purple, blue, purple, green, orange. Um, so just to prove to you guys, you can watch me um, traverse the map and I'll go green, orange, purple, orange, Blue, purple, green, orange, blue, red, and yellow. And of course, you can replay and it shuffles the board differently. So each level is actually um, it's a different test case. But so the searched and bounded uh, these numbers indicate the number of nodes along the, um, the number of different game states that the algorithm hit and actively searched throughout its traversal of the search space. So it hit 41,000 different game states. And of those 41,000, it was able to bound away 30,000 or about 31,000 because it was able to deduce, given my currently best known solution, um, these guys are not able to beat the best known solution currently, so I can just disregard those game states and not continue searching them and wasting my time. Okay, so I just have here a, um, a hexagon board, and the rules for hexagons are uh, probably self-explanatory, but a single hexagon is adjacent to the six neighboring hexagons. So 
So I just wanted to show you what the stats look like um, for a larger state space because the um, the depth is much larger, 18 versus what the other one was. And then um, it's interesting to see how many nodes are bounded away versus how many are searched. Um, and then like the result of that on the time it took. But so I have the, um, the image. What is it? 739. And then 18 is cut. So um, that'll run for a couple of minutes at least, I think. So I'll just quickly explain uh, what's actually happening. Um, and I'll be uh, concise. But I represent the board as a graph, logically, where vertices are interconnected uh, like colored tiles. So these three red hexagons, that would be one vertex in the graph because the, they're all adjacent to one another. Uh, similarly, all five of these orange hexagons, those would be blobbed together as one vertex in the graph. And then arcs or uh, edges exist between two vertices if they are adjacent physically uh, in the picture. So like this purple guy would be adjacent to this uh, three-tiled green guy. And so what happens is um, the root of the search tree is this initial game state where you have not chosen any colors and you have only absorbed this initial oscillating tile. And the branching factor is given by the number of unique, uh, uniquely colored tiles that are neighboring the active region, rather. So uh, initially, this guy has three. The branching factor of the root state is three. You have orange as an option, red, and purple. And then for each of those choices, it must recur and do the same mechanism. Um, and, do, and basically you traverse the tree in that manner, and there are clever ways of pruning um, entire subtrees that you can deduce that are not optimal, like I was talking about before. For example, if I reach, if I reach a final state somewhere along that scheme and that path, and I, and I did it in 12 moves, if I come again to another state that theoretically can do no more than thir can do no better than 13 moves, I don't need to continue searching down that path because there's no way for any of the states in that subtree to beat what my current best is. So you can do clever things like that. Um, my branching scheme right now, um, or well, rather how I guide the search and my pruning rules are very crude. So it searches a lot more than it um, probably needs to. Um, so there are ways, and I have ideas of making it a lot faster. And then, of course, like how you represent the game state obviously has an enormous impact on the performance. Um, but yeah, so I'll cut out this wait time, and I'll, and I'll come back when other solutions are. Okay, so we're back. Um, it searched a little bit longer than five and a half minutes, uh, 348,000 milliseconds which um, is probably a bit slow, but uh, regardless, the optimal number of moves is 14 to reach a solution state. So I'll just go through that uh, for funsies. Purple, orange, green, blue, purple. Green, orange, purple. Blue, red, purple. Uh, green orange yellow. Cool. So yeah, that's it. And then uh, just to show you guys, so those are like the introductory levels, right? Just so you get a sense of like the impact of the exponential growth rate, like in the search space, like as you increase the max number of moves in order to reach a solution state. Um, this square level that I'm on. So look at how many vertices there are. I think there are like on average 300 vertices in like the logical graph that gets constructed um, once you pass in this image. And then the depth of the search space is 35, right? So if we do the same kind of like rough um, estimation that we did before, five raised to the 35 is like absurd. So the dream is to be able to do this and to do it in like less than a minute, um, but Obviously, it's a hard problem, um, like computationally, and uh, just depends on how clever you can get your algorithm. But yeah, thanks for watching.